Thank you to Rita and David Kaufman for generously sponsoring this week's Tvar Torah in memory of David's mother, Pearl Mylan Kaufman. Ve'ele toldot Yitzchak ben Avraham. This is the story of Isaac, the son of Abraham. This is the story of Isaac. These toldot, this cycle of stories in this parsha, are oriented around Isaac. And yet the first story is actually about Rebecca, as much as it's about Isaac, and maybe even more so. 20 years have passed since a young girl left her family and went to a strange land. Since she fell off her camel and covered her face when she encountered her future husband. Since she brought comfort and love to Isaac while he was deep in grief after the death of his mother. What must it have been like for her to leave her family so young knowing she would probably never see them again? To have to adopt a new way of life, a new way of running a household, of cooking, a new religion, a new God? And for years, in the midst of this transition and foreignness, Rivka and Yitzchak, like his parents, struggled with fertility. Our parsha tells us that Yitzchak pleaded on behalf of Rivka. But did he talk to Rebecca? Did she have friends, people she could confide in, in this new home? Or was her suffering compounded by isolation and unspoken fears? The Torah offers us no answers, but we do learn that when Rivka does conceive, she is further plagued by a painful pregnancy. The twins inside of her, yit rotsutsu, they were crushing one another within her body. Her pain, physical and emotional, was so acute that she cried out, lama ze anochi, if this is how it is, why do I exist? Why was this pain designated for me? Rivka's Suffering, her pain, is not hidden from us, the readers, and it's also not hidden from God. God heard Rivka and responded, offering a blessing and a prophecy for her unborn children, for the nations that would stem from them. This brief exchange between Rivka and God draws attention both to her pain and her blessing. Away from home, carrying the weight of her difficulty in conceiving and her challenging pregnancy, Rivka is blessed in the midst of her suffering. She will give birth to these two children. They will be the progenitors of nations. Her physical pain is not eased by God's blessing. Her loneliness and alienness does not subside. And yet, she has this blessing, her own unique divine gift. Something that is only hers, even Isaac doesn't know about it. And she, hold on, she holds on to this precious gift letting it guide her as she raises her sons, directing her as she pushes Jacob into his father's tent to receive the blessing that Isaac intended for Esav. Rivka took the blessing God gave her and she lived into it. God's blessing to her enabled Rivka to become a creator of blessings herself. The Reverend Jan Richardson, a writer, artist, and minister, also took to creating blessings during a time of deep struggle in her own life. One of the essential distinctions she makes is the difference between being blessed and experiencing blessing. Being blessed is a fixed and breakable status. It can be interpreted as a sign that demonstrates to us and others that we have received God's favor or we have earned or accomplished something. Being blessed in this way can be comforting in its own way. We can point our fingers and say, see that over there? That is proof that I am blessed that everything is okay. But it's harder to cling to in moments when it feels impossible to point to something, either because whatever it is, family, friends, meaningful work, health, vigor, because those things are absent, or because we're in an emotional place where we can't see the blessing that's sitting right before us, because it's just too hard. Reverend Richardson explains that while offering and experiencing blessings can seem counter to grief and sorrow, a blessing can help us perceive how heaven infuses earth, inextricable from daily life, even when that life is marked by pain. Articulating blessings in our lives, in other words, even in the most difficult times, helps us to view our lives as blessings in motion, or even as agents of blessing. 
not just as lives that are blessed, passively receiving the hand of fate deals us. Her language of perceiving how heaven infuses earth is an echo of one of the blessings Jacob receives in this Parsha. May God give you the dew of heaven and the fat of land. A Midrash translates this blessing to mean, may God give you godliness. And the Hasidic teacher, the Sfat Emet, interprets this to mean that Jacob and his descendants could draw godliness from everything in existence, from the dew of heaven to the fat of the land and everything beyond. Even the earth itself, even the most mundane objects and experiences could be ways to connect with God. Jacob's life was not easy, nor the experiences of his descendants. And yet prescient Yitzchak offered us the gift of the capacity to perceive how heaven infuses earth, to seek out godliness even in the moments that seem totally disconnected from the heavenly and the celestial. Richardson adds that a good blessing invites us into a space where it doesn't try to make sense of things, but it assures us that even when we are having a hard time believing it or imagining it, that God is somehow present there. And a blessing has a way of naming that and inviting us into that. Sometimes when we can't even necessarily believe every word of the blessing, but it invites us into that space. Rivka suffered tremendously alone and unsure even after 20 years in a foreign land with her children at war within her before they were even born, she questions her existence. She questions her pain. And then she wills a blessing into the world. She understands in that moment that God is somehow present and that God's blessing, even if it was difficult to comprehend or fully believe, invited her into a space of grace a space where she could grieve and feel a semblance of comfort and support and connection as she kept fighting to put one foot in front of the other. As we approach Thanksgiving in just a few days, we are coming to a moment when we are supposed to count our blessings, when we are supposed to express joy at gathering and gratitude for abundance. We don't have a communal text or a formula for celebrating in the midst of collective trauma in a time of widespread fear and uncertainty. But maybe, like Rivka, we can find something, anything, to latch onto. Maybe we can find blessing even if we don't feel blessed. I want to end by sharing a blessing uh, that Reverend Richardson wrote. Something to hold in your hearts and nourish you as we wade deeper into the dark month of Kislev as we work to seek out the gratitude of Thanksgiving and the illumination of Hanukkah. Her blessing is titled, Beloved is Where We Begin. If you would enter into the wilderness, do not begin without a blessing. Do not leave without hearing who you are. Beloved, named by the one who has traveled this path before you. Do not go without letting it echo in your ears. And if you find, it is hard to let it into your heart, do not despair. That is what this journey is for. I cannot promise this blessing will free you from danger, from fear, from hunger or thirst. From the scorching of the sun or the fall of the night. But I can tell you that on this path, there will be help. I can tell you that on this way, there will be rest. I can tell you that you will know the strange graces that come to our aid only on a road such as this, that fly to meet us bearing comfort and strength, that come alongside us for no other cause than to lean themselves toward our ear and with their curious insistence, whisper our name, beloved, beloved, Beloved. Shabbat Shalom. <laughs>